to this committee and as the industry minister. And so, I mean, at the end of the day, as I understand the connection to the industry committee here, it's a 2017 transaction pursuant to the Investment Canada Act. Um, and that would be the what we would look at here. Colleagues ought to know if they're unfamiliar with the industry committee, they ought to know that we've studied the Investment Canada Act, not only in general in a previous parliament, but we also, and we tabled the report in uh, February of 2021, but we also studied it specifically in relation to a transaction, uh, a, a transaction where a, a mining company was acquired by a company that had a large ownership by a state-owned enterprise in China. So we, we've looked at this specific issue in relation to the Investment Canada Act on more than one occasion. So I guess uh, I'm struggling with how this is really an industry consideration given the public safety critic is here because it's a public safety issue. Um, and I, I don't mind studying this issue as a general principle, but you know I hope to visit the public safety committee to study the issue and not have the public safety critic visit the industry committee to study it. Thank you, Mr. Erskine-Smith. Uh, Mr. Williams. This will work eventually. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. It's a pleasure to uh, be here today to speak to this topic. Um, first off, just I, I wanted to point out um, first, when we talk about committees, committees are masters of their of their own proceedings, which I think is a really important point when we get into this. But this this is an Investment Canada Act issue. It certainly is an industry issue, uh, specifically and and mostly because um, there have been different times, as as the previous member mentioned, that we've dealt with certain these issues, the neolithium issue, uh, certainly other companies, and we just have not got it right. When we look at, especially right now with the government launching a new Indo-Pacific strategy, certainly we've all heard the news reports of uh, alleged Chinese police stations. Um, you know, we can go f as far back as we want to Nortel. Um, I, served, I have an office in an old Nortel building in Belleville. It used to be really big, and, and I know that uh, the DND has one west in Canada. And there's always talk about having to clean the amount of bugs that have been in those buildings. Um, we've had interference for a long time, and whether this government now is making uh, it known that it's more serious or we're changing the strategy, certainly when it comes to the Investment Canada Act, when it comes to protecting our security, uh, whether that be critical minerals or telecommunications as a whole, uh, certainly I think all the members in this committee should warrant that this, this at this point um, needs to be studied. It, it's given the importance is there to study this issue, not only because this was not uh, uh, government or, or uh, uh, something that came out forthright that was discovered, it was from the press. So the questions my, my colleague brought up, whether that is, is this the only instance where this is occurring, uh, certainly, you know, there was in 2017 um, a government review of the approved sale of Vancouver-based Norsat International to Astera, and at that time in 2017, que MPs questioned that. We're now in 2022, almost 20, 2023, certainly almost three year, or six years later, and the same issues are there. So to say that we've studied this, uh, certainly for two meetings, for two days, uh, given the importance of what, what the implications of this finding are, uh, given the importance of strengthening the Investment Canada Act, given the importance of protecting our, our information, our companies, our sovereignty in this country, uh, certainly through the industry committee, it is actually the right time to have those questions asked. And, you know, the government has already suspended the contract, so there's already been action made. So, therefore, there should be full agreement that we can look into how this happened and how it cannot happen again. I think, given for a few reasons, one, uh, the importance of what is happening and the significance of that to our nation, but number two, to the further future of this committee of, of company uh, procurement, and making sure that we strengthen the Investment Canada Act to make sure this doesn't happen again. Um, you know, I think uh, this has been beyond the, uh, the fool me once, uh, shame, on, shame on you, fool me twice. This is happening three or four times. We certainly need to get to the bottom of it. So I don't see why for two days to bring the relevant witnesses to this committee to have a report that goes to Parliament at a time when we're trying to improve all the other uh, bills, like my colleague mentioned, C-27, Certainly the, the government who's talked about improving the Investment Canada Act, and certainly at a time when the Indo-Pacific strategy has been forthright and brought forward, although late, by the government, 
it certainly is the right time in my mind to spend two days, let's investigate what's happened. Certainly, uh, for, for maybe one of the biggest reasons, the company that lost out on that one bid is from Quebec. So, you know, why did a Canadian company lose out to that bid in the first place? And as my colleague has mentioned, how, many, how, how much is it going to take to unravel what we've already implemented? The contract, is it still in place? What's there? And how do we go out and see that a, a new RFP is, is, uh, is put forth where that, that maybe will benefit Quebec at the end of the day? So I think uh, a lot of good reasons to go at this. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair.